Hello there, how are you doing? Welcome to your favorite show right here on Ebru TV every Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., my doctor show. My name is Purity Museo, and so today we just want to focus our discussion on vaginal hygiene or vaginal care. We will be looking at what's normal, what's not normal, what the normal order is like, and also what could be wrong. What are some of the infections that can affect one's vagina? We will be joined by Dr. Anthony Wasuna, who is a guy gynecologist and also Dr. Maureen Owiti, they will be helping us understand more about vaginal care or vaginal hygiene. You may want to be part of the show by calling us in or even asking a few questions, putting across your comments, then you welcome. Use the number that will be displayed right at the bottom of your screen to call us live and also you can use the hashtag my doctor on Twitter at EbruTV Kenya at Purity underscore Museo. Once again, welcome to the show. Just sit back, relax and learn from this exciting and bumper show ahead. Welcome back to the show. My name is Purity Musel and joining me in studio is Dr. Anthony Wasuna, a gynecologist. Uh, he will be explaining himself more on especially where he is based, but you can use the number 0791478990. Use the hashtag my doctor on, uh, on Twitter at Ebru TV Kenya at Purity underscore Musel, or you can also talk to us on Facebook, uh, Ebru TV Kenya or Purity Musel. Welcome Dr. Anthony Wasuna Thank to you. our discussion Lovely. today. Yes, we are talking about vaginal hygiene. Indeed, we shall. Can we, uh, con you say that we can give it another name? Um, I think for a lot of viewers mm. who are pretty uh, shy with a the, with the particular medical name vagina mm. because for whatever cultural reasons or connotations they have, mm. um, can we christen her Virginia for today? Virginia for today. All right, that's All a right. good name, Virginia. As the American state of Virginia. Virginia for today. All right. right, should we begin with explaining what it is or what the imp important, as an important part of the body, what it does, where do we begin, Doc? Okay, well, what is it? Well, it's, it's a, it, a tube, basically, um, <clears throat> a part of a woman's body between the outside, what we call the vulva, and the internal all the way up, it's about eight centimeters long, all the way up to the beginnings of the, of the womb, the uterus. Um, it's fibromuscular, that's a medical term. All that means is it's made of muscle and a tissue called fibrous tissue. Um, those of us who are nyamachoma eaters would know that the hard part, you know, just near the bone, this whitish tissue, which is really tough, you know, gristle, that particular part of, 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 of meat, is f it's very, very hard and tough. So the birth canal, the vagina, Virginia is made of muscle and, and this tough fibrous tissue to give it its strength. It also has a lining um, on the inside part. Um, you, we can call them like tiles that we have on the, on the, on the floor of the studio here. So they also have a lining of tiles, um, which we call the mucosa. That's the part that you would see um, if we're looking as a doctor in. And that's a very specialized lining. Um, it's, it's an amazing organ that the Lord made for, for women because not only does it have to be really tough to withstand the vigors of childbirth, for example, the stretching and everything, and of course, uh, intimacy, but also sensitive enough for, for pleasure, the intimate um, act. That, that women and men go through. Mm -hmm. And so this is an amazing organ that, that, that has, serves functions from childbirth to intimacy and also as a conduit for blood to come out from the, from the uterus all the way to the outside. So mm -hmm. uh, we're going to discuss a lot of things about this particular organ that is fascinating. Mm -hmm. And let's continue with the functions of our mm -hmm. vagina. Do we have more functions or more purposes of a vagina? For a well, basically there mm -hmm. are three. The yeah. first of which we know is childbirth. Mm -hmm. from, from the womb all the way out, the child has to pass through. Mm -hmm. Uh, number two is intimacy between a man and woman, and it also uh, has pleasure. It's not just about um, the man's pleasure. A woman does derive pleasure uh, during intimacy, and the vagina will facilitate that with other organs into play, but also a conduit for blood to come out. I, I mentioned that, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. And there are so many issues and complications that come, uh, 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 that we experience as women. First, uh, maybe you can highlight some of them, the kind of infections that they can be, but most importantly, what is usually the reason behind all these infections? Before I even go to infections, I mm. think the first thing I need to, to, to outline is that, strangely, there's a lot of, uh, culturally, there's a form, um, I think there's a negative connotation mm. um, linked to this particular organ, even though it's a fascinating one, you know. And so it's sometimes viewed with shame yeah. or embarrassment, um, hence the fact that I have to call it Virginia here because mm. some people can't even <laughs> pronounce the word or say it out. Um, there is nothing shameful about this. Um, you know, it's just as important as your head. Mm. All parts of the body are important in their own ways, all fitted together. So nevertheless, so the first thing that we have to get through is the stigma 
of yes. negativism that is attached to this particular organ. And sometimes it's even used, um, unfortunately, in mm. abusive um, uh, language and things like that. So um, I think that is just a, a total, total misrepresentation mm. of what should be a, a, a respected, respectable yes. part of a woman's body. Mm -hmm. Anatomy is the word that we use. Yes, and you talked of the culture that is behind the stigma that there could be in terms of when we start uh, regarding the vagina. But then how do we address it and how do we make ourselves comfortable to talk about these issues and also to mention this part as a very important part of a, a woman? It's all about upbringing. That's the first mm -hmm. thing. We're taught that um, that's a shameful part. Hide it. You know, I think um, the first thing is we need to treat every part of the body with respect. That's the first thing. And then that has to come out in our educational system whether we as doctors or parents uh, teaching their children from sexual education, um, parents being the first to do that. So that, that, that should be, it's not tabi ambaya. It should be told that this is a, a, a precious part of your body. Um, in our particular house, we call it treasure, the woman's treasure, so that she understands that this is a precious part of her, first and foremost. Moving on to, um, you talked about infections, mm -hmm. you asked and, about and infections. Maybe just before we get to the infections, you could just help us understand what's a normal Virginia like? Mm -hmm. uh, normal Virginia. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's about eight centimeters long. Um, it has a pH, which is an acidic level of about four. That's the acidic. Um, there are special germs uh, within the birth canal, the Virginia, within Virginia. She has special germs. And um, also she produces um, a form of sugar we call glycogen. So the germs break down this sugar to form acid. So the normal um, uh, Virginia, vagina of a woman, who is in the reproductive age, uh, has an acidic component inside. And this actually helps to keep out infections out. It's a self-defense um, mechanism, if I can call it that. I like to call these little germs, they have a big name, and I'll mention it because I'm on the show, mm -hmm. Lactobacillus acidophilus uh, tulisoma. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, <laughs> so this particular, lacto this, this particular germ, the same germs almost that turn milk into yogurt, they break down sugar that's found inside um, the vagina and cause the environment to be acidic. Bad germs can't live in this acidic environment. These good germs can. So that's the primary defense. The second thing is also a normal vagina should have a normal discharge. Okay. Now the discharge comes from the upper part coming out. The walls of the vagina also produce it, but largely the upper part, which is the lower part of the womb, the cervix, produces a discharge. And the general... Um, egress out of this discharge over time is a cleanser, a natural cleanser. Together with the acid media keeps um, germs out, it keeps infection out. You will note that, technically speaking, from the outside, the vagina uh, acts as a conduit where through the womb, all the way through the womb and into a, body's, uh, a woman's body through the tubes, it's almost like a through, a thoroughfare, it's an, an open system. And so you'd think germs can actually get from the outside to in, but mm -hmm. this, this um, cleansing mechanism I talked about, plus the acidic uh, environment, keeps um, infections from going from the outside, the germs, that is, all the way to the inside. So a normal vagina should have a proper pH, which is an acidic level of about four. It's about eight centimeters long. It's a single tube. Some women have doubles because of ways in which they, they developed wrongly. There were things that went wrong, mm -hmm. but it should be a single tube. Um, it should have in a, in a non uh, in a virginal woman a hymen, which is a partial membrane, and then of course at the upper part it communicates together with the uh, the uterus, yes. and that's what it should be like. And you've talked about uh, discharge for a woman who's already reached reproductive age. Is it different for a young girl who's not yet at that particular age? Uh, generally, so when a woman is at her reproductive age, the discharge we expect is going to be um, either watery in color or slightly white, with not much of a scent to it. Okay, it's composed of um, dead cells, yes, and uh, mucus produced by, by the, the vagina. Um, of course, um, lower states of hygiene will produce more of a scent, you know, just like a man who's sweating. If he showers every day, you don't wet you, you, twice a day, actually, three times for some. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, there should not be much of a smell. But the moment you begin getting alterations in color mm -hmm. or smell, then um, there'll be a problem. Having said that, the normal discharge of a woman also, who is in reproductive age, would in include menses. So we expect once every month, every 28 days averagely, there will be uh, blood coming out. Mm -hmm. Okay, And we'll be getting back to the menses and yeah. also. But, Doc, so you've talked about the normal, what a normal vagina, Virginia, should be like. But then what could go wrong? What can go wrong in a normal vagina? Okay, mm. well, um, a lot, actually. Mm. Let's begin with the commonest. In mm. fact, 
one of the commonest things that any doctor will face uh, in his surgery office would be abnormal uh, vaginal discharge. The commonest in our setting is what we call a yeast infection, candida, candidiasis. So if I'm to be candid about mm -hmm. this, what this is is a form of a fungus. Fungus is um, it's a kind of germ almost related to what we use to make bread, yeast. So this particular one, the word we use is pathological, meaning it's a, it's a sickness-causing one. So this sickness-causing yeast, um, if the aforementioned uh, mechanism, the acidic levels of a woman in the birth canal are reduced, then now we have a situation where bad germs can colonize and live. And case in point is candidiasis. This will produce a discharge which is whitish, sometimes going to cream yellow, but it's thick, almost like um, milk that's gone bad, maziwamala, mm. okay? It's going to be like that. It might have a slight scent. If other infections come in at the same time, then the scent becomes stronger. But also, this tends to itch a lot. And it is often said that women, once in their lifetime, will get this particular infection. Um, the certain conditions or things that can cause it to become more, more common. Uh, we do see it in women who have taken antibiotics. Mm -hmm. uh, antibiotics are the medications that we as doctors use to kill certain germs, okay, bacteria. Maybe you have a throat infection or you have a urine infection and you put on antibiotics. So what they do, uh, they kill bacteria, including your good bacteria. Remember the ones that we just talked about? So the moment you have no good bacteria, that's your defense mechanism gone, mm -hmm. then in comes uh, yeast and it'll grow. Mm -hmm. And it's itchy, it has a whitish thick discharge, it's very common, but it's easy to treat. Mm -hmm. um, either with tablets to swallow or tablets which we insert, a woman will insert into the birth canal, into her vagina, uh, we call those pessaries. Yes, and, and, so and, it's, it's and it's yeah, and cause it's very common, does it have anything to do with the vaginal hygiene or is it normal, especially after menses, what happens? Okay, mm. you're, you're, yes, um, you, you're, you're onto something here. Mm. Anything which will alter the acidic levels, the pH of the vagina and, and in make it less acidic can, predispose you, make it easy for you to get a yeast infection. So uh, some women will, will note that after their menses, after their periods, they itch a bit or the whitish discharge tends to, to flare up. And that's because the washing of acid away by blood okay, has decreased, has, has, has caused this um, atmosphere that I talked about, the mm -hmm. acidic atmosphere to reduce. So that happens. Other situations or other things that can cause um, yeast to, 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 to colonize would be some women get it after taking birth control pills, for example. Mm. Um, some are known to get it a lot and so would, uh, would choose a, a different method. Stress can cause it. Mm. Um, I, I even read somewhere lack of sleep, which is related to stress. All these things can alter a woman's hormonal um, um, balance, mm -hmm. things like that, and cause a change within the birth canal, and then you can get a yeast infection. The yeast can colonize it. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and we'll also be getting to the vaginal hygiene. What's the proper, how to take care of your Virginia, as we say. But Doc, you've mentioned uh, birth control. Do we have a relation? Because there are many claims that uh, the people on, on birth control, using any kind of a birth control method, they tend to have these infections, especially the yeast infection. Then also demystify for us whether yeast infection is an STI or it's just a normal infection that women should not get worried. Okay, so first and foremost, um, we do see uh, some women who come in and say, I began this birth control method and all of a sudden I'm getting so many yeast infections. And the moment they stop it, it's treatable and it goes. So yes, there is a slight link between birth control methods, the hormonal ones uh, especially, uh, and getting yeast infections. So that, that is true. Mm. Hygiene. Um, the birth, can birth canal, the vagina actually cleanses itself. Uh, and so women who um, would use douches, you've heard of douches, mm. okay? These are either medicated or, or herbal or whatever they are, cleansers they call them. What these might do is change the, um, the atmosphere of the germs, the normal germs found there. And the moment that happens, then you open up to getting infections mm. because the good germs which are meant to protect you, you've changed the amount or they're, you know, they're killed mm. uh, by these. Some people even get these uh, infections because of uh, bubble bath, for example. So these are soaps. Some soaps are, are really strong and are not meant for the internal part. So I know, of, I've heard of women who use soap to cleanse themselves inside. Mm -hmm. They're interfering 
with the normal germs that are found there. Mm -hmm. And so they can actually um, make it easier for them to get infections. And they'll wonder why. I'm cleaning myself, but I'm not healing. I'm cleaning myself, I'm keeping myself clean. Well, it's because the substances they're using to clean mm. are um, affecting the normal germs found there, which are your defense force, mm. if I might call them. And there. you'll be telling us the right ones to use to clean ourselves, right? Okay, well yeah, talk to us. The call line is 0791478990. Use the hashtag MyDoctor on Twitter at EbruTVKenya at Purity underscore Museo or on our Facebook page. We do have uh, EbruTVKenya and Purity Museo. But I, my director tells me there's someone online. Hello. Hello. Hello, hi. Hello. Talk to us. Talk to us. Yes, and the corner will get around. Hello. 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 Hello? Just, just, punguza sauti ya TV yako, mina kupata. Ah. Okay, go ahead now. Okay. I think he's going to call Lost back. Okay. Yeah. And so let's continue with the conversation, Doc. You've talked about we were, we were at the yeast infections, mm. you, the relationship between yeast infection. First, is it an STI? Should okay. women get worried once they, ha they have yeast infection or is it just a normal infection that can be controlled? Well, it's, it's, um, it's not very dangerous, mm. uh, but it's very irritating. Uh, technically, we don't call it an STI. Mm. It's not technically sexually spread. However, <clears throat> um, the partner of a woman, if they're sexually active, can actually uh, begin itching a little bit. So technically, it's not quite an STI, uh, but yes, uh, it can be. It can be passed on from the woman to the man um, if she has yeast deep inside the birth canal and it gets onto his skin. Um, yeast is not a very strong colonizer. It needs a soft skin, if I'm to call it that. The inner part of a woman, which is the lining of the birth canal, is easier to invade than normal skin on a man like this, which is why generally it, it's harder for a man to get it. But um, yes, men do get it uh, around the crotch area and will begin to itch, easily sorted out by creams or antifungal drugs, just mm -hmm. as it is with the woman. Yeah, and once untreated, is there a cause for alarm? Can it maybe lead to a more complicated uh, condition? Generally, no. Once you oh. treat it, 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 but some of them could be stubborn. We have certain uh, yeast species, um, tribes, if I could call them that. Mm. Kenya is really rife with tribes. Mm. Certain tribes of this particular yeast uh, that will be resistant Doc, to medication. I think Samuel is back. Can you hear what he has to sure. say? Hello, Samuel. Hello. Hello, hi. Hi. Talk to us. Yeah, I was asking mm. what causes the dryness in a vagina because uh, I have a girlfriend with me. Mm -hmm. And she's experiencing the. I'm experiencing the. That yeah. in me. Okay. Yeah, go and it gets her. Uh, Whenever it comes to having pressure, it becomes so painful. Whenever, so it is not. It is more dry. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Samuel, for your concern. You've heard what Samuel was asking. Right, so he's yeah. probably asking about if I got him right. Mm. Um, we're discussing the topic of lubrication during intimacy. First and foremost, how does lubrication happen? Mm. The birth canal itself does produce a bit more fluid, a bit more uh, secretions during a woman's sexual arousal. Mm -hmm. There are also some two glands. Glands are st um, structures in the body which produce uh, certain chemicals. So these two glands produce uh, some of the, the secretions also. They're called Bartholin's glands and they're just near the entrance of a woman's um, vagina. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to produce lubrication for the intimate act. But that is also dependent on a woman's arousal. So if there's fear, um, shame, and, and she's not in the right emotional mood, not enough time in terms of uh, foreplay, she's not going to be well mm. lubricated. But secondly also, um, there are drugs which can actually cause decreased lubrication. Women who are uh, on birth control pills, some of them will, will mention that they are a bit drier than usual. And for that, we do have uh, commercial lubricants that can be used to, to, to help. Age, uh, the certain age above which lubrication becomes an issue, ab above the menopause. Menopause is the age where a woman stops having her periods. So other, after the menopause, we tend to see a decrease in lubrication. And Doc, allow me to cut you short. Let's yeah. receive another call and we can combine the two questions. They're coming thick and fast. All you right. handle them all right. <laughs> all right, hello. 
Hello. Yes, hi. Fine. Nataka kuongea na daktari huyu hapo kwa live TV. Anasikiliza muongeleshe. Aski. Uh, Doc you can just say hi so that anasikia. How are you? I hear just you. Speak with her. Hello. Ah, there you go. Okay, tunakusikiza vizuri sana. Habari yako? Mzuri sana. Karibu. Hello. Nauliza hivi. Uliza. Nilikuwa nauliza hii. Hii swali ya faji na kea. Mhm. Mm Mimi niko na ugonjwa. Na Hello. Yes, hello. Tunakusikiza. Punguza sauti ya TV yako. Nime Nimepimwa kila kitu. Aya, endelea. Nimepimwa kila kitu. Aya, endelea. Na sina ugonjwa lakini wanatoa harufu. Nimepata Okay. Yeah. Nasema ndio. Niko na niko na ugonjwa wangu. Niseme ni ugonjwa sababu huwa ninatoa harufu chini. Ni nini baya na nimetibiwa, nimepimwa, pump smear, nimepimwa kila kitu na sionekani ugonjwa na ambio niko msafi. Okay. Ni nini baya na ninawagani tatumia please. Okay. Asante sana. I think, Doc, you, you can help her. We were discussing right. vaginal discharges, mm. and um, let's talk about vaginal scent. Um, in a woman, um, other than the fact that she can get yeast, that was the first, we, we, we put that aside. Mm. There's another condition where you have an overgrowth of the normal bacteria or a change in, in the, uh, the number that they're supposed to be. It's called bacterial vaginosis, mm. big word. And that will give us typically a bad smell. It smells like fish. Mm a fishy smell, and I'm not talking about fried fish cooking, I'm talking about fish that's rotting. Mm. So it smells like that, and that might be what she might be going through. Mm. She might also have um, uh, cervicitis, there's a, an infection of the cervix up. Mm. Well, any, any bacterial infection inside the birth canal that will cause that uh, will cause a bit of a scent. There's a, 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 a certain disease called pelvic inflammatory disease. Mm. Uh, this is an a, a STI, it's a it's sexually transmitted infection. will also cause a discharge which has a scent. Okay, and so she might have yeast that is mixed. She might have bacterial vaginosis. What doctors can do is take a sample, it's called a swab, of the discharge inside and we can grow the germs on a dish and then we can tell what it is and, and give appropriate uh, treatment, either antibiotics, antifungals, it is sortable. So she doesn't have to suffer. Um, she should get to a good reputable hospital mm -hmm. and this can easily be done for her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of them, as I mentioned, are actually um, resistant. And so she might have used a certain medicine, a medication, it didn't work. We can also switch to others. We have a whole repertoire of, of medicines that we can use to treat but I think she would probably need um, a gynecological assessment mm. um, and, and check. Having said that, there's also a discharge which is very ominous. Um, if a woman has cancer of the cervix, cancer of the cervix, she will have a discharge which has a very um, strong smell. You would actually tell if a lady passes by and she has cancer of the cervix, there is a smell that she would have that, that doctors know because we, we, we've treated this. And uh, I think she should have an assessment by a doctor who would actually do what is called a pelvic examination where we actually look inside and check her and find out where the source of this discharge or smell is coming from. Mm -hmm. mm. And, and doctor, I think it's important we talk more about the order. Maybe you can explain what do we have, should we have an order of the vagina? Is it normal or what should be a normal order if there is any or if there should be any order be like? All right, good Healthy mm. uh, birth canal vagina mm. and a lady who keeps her hygiene, generally, not much. Okay. Not much, not much of an odor. Mm. We begin to get an odor that is off or offensive, there's definitely something going on. And it'll always, it, many times, it will be accompanied by a discharge. Sometimes a woman might not notice it, but when a doctor has a look inside, we'll see it. Mm -hmm. And we take a sample of it mm. and grow the germs and find out what's going on. So generally, there should be much of an odor unless we have issues with disease or hygiene. Mm -hmm. So that's basically the cause of any order that is disturbing, Largely, either yes. hygiene or any disease yes. complication. Yes. Let's finish up on the, there's a caller who was asking about the, was it rejuvenation or it was something, what are some of the factors that may lead to one being dry and is there ah. a way, Doc, that can be stimulated, is there a way we can stimulate Okay, that? so um, we are all told as, mm. as, 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 as partners and husbands is that you have to, um, love takes time. So a woman has to be prepared for intimacy. And so if intimacy is rushed, hurried, 
uh, a woman will not be well lubricated for the intimate act. That's number one. Number two, if she's on medications like birth control medications, especially the hormonal ones, that actually might cause a decrease in lubrication. Uh, she, can use com he, she can use commercial lubricants. If you go to the, the chemists, they'll give you a commercial lubricant which will aid this. Mm -hmm. uh, this is also seen, as I mentioned, in women who are older who naturally will have less lubrication. Again, women are different. They'll do, they are those who naturally will have much more lubrication, those who will have less. So people are different. So a woman will know herself, and if there's no disease process, um, if, she's on, if she's on drugs or whatever the cause it is, she can use a commercial lubricant to help. If it is just because her, hus uh, her, her partner is not very engaging in helping her to get lubricated, that's a discussion that they could have. Mm -hmm. So yeah. all those could be possible mm -hmm. um, helps for this particular person. Right, and when we come back, we continue with this discussion. We'll be looking at what are normal and what's not normal, how to care for you, Virginia, that's what you're calling it. Call us live. The number is 0791478990. You have any concern, Dr. Anthony Wasuna is still here with us, but when we come back, we'll also be joined by Dr. Maureen Owiti, still on this conversation so, so do stay with us. Welcome back to the second and the last part of the show. Remember, our conversation today is focused on vaginal care or vaginal hygiene. Call us live. Do you have any issues regarding your vagina? Then this is the show you should be right, watching right now. Use the number 0791478990 or use the hashtag MyDoctor on Twitter at EbruTVKenya at Purity underscore Musel. And Dr. Maureen Owiti is here with us in studio. Welcome to the show, Doc. Thank you, Purity. Yes. Yes, welcome. Uh, we had already begun the conversation with Dr. Anthony. And uh, Doc, maybe we still have our structure here on board. The director is working on it. But we were looking at some of the issues. What could go wrong on a vagina? Doctors already talked about the yeast infections. But do we have other conditions that could be as a result of lack of good care for your vagina? Hmm. Okay, um, again, I'm quite sorry for the delay. But uh, I'm sure uh, Dr. Asuna has covered it uh, uh, quite adequately. Mm. Now, I don't know if you talked about what should not go mm. into the vagina because I think one of the biggest challenges we're facing with a lot of women right now is douching. Mm. And douching comes in various forms. So you find there'll be some nets, they tell you put lemons, others tell you stones, others tell you, I don't know, strange things. So. The vagina is like a self-cleaning iron or a self-cleaning microwave. It cleans itself. It should not be interfered with. Mm. Uh, I think I was able to come in and hear Dr. Wasuna talk about bacterial vaginosis. Now, bacterial vaginosis is caused when there's a shift in the type of organisms or bacteria that's inside the vagina. Mm. Now, when you use any of these things, in fact, somebody told me she used to use expensive soap. Yes, they smell wonderful, but they're for your skin. Your skin can tolerate using a beautiful scented soap. And I think everyone wants to smell wonderful. Mm. As Dr. Asuna had pointed out, the normal vag vaginal secretions does not have an odor per se. If it's anything, it's very mild and it's not unpleasant. Okay, mm. so if you're starting to notice some unpleasant odor, mm. and you're those people who go putting uh, L'Oreal, I don't know what things in the vagina, what I'd really, really like to tell women is that this is something that you should stop and mm. stop doing mm. immediately. Okay, and, and we do have your someone health calling will us. Be, will come back. All right, let's see what one of our viewers is saying. Hello. 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 Hi. Oh, I'm fine. I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I have a teenage daughter, mm. and she has developed some problems. Originally, she used to have uh, what passes, mm -hmm. and we were treated. Okay. And now she has gone to a boarding school, and I have noticed that on the area, on the outer area of her vagina, she has some pimples. Mm -hmm. They have tried the time she was given cotrimazole, she was also given some drugs. But they keep recurring. She has these big pimples sometimes, almost like 
some on the quite on the reef, the others on the external area. And it is quite worrying. I'm wondering what is the problem. Mm. He has used some creams. He has used uh, to be careful. I've told her how to, to be careful, but it, they keep recurring. They go away after some time. She comes back, she has one. She has two. She has three. What can I do? What is the problem? What are causing these people? I know she's not sexually active. I know that. Mm. Yeah, so I'm wondering what is it? Do you have a question maybe before you let her go? Or is it okay with her, the she symptoms? She talked about pimples, pimples that happen uh, there. Mm. Again, <coughs> I do know that when a lot of women talk about the vagina, they're not talking about the tube that mm. you see on the, on the screen. They're talking about the outside part, mm. you know, on the lips or the entrance. And we've seen this, I've seen with women who shave very closely. They could use uh, the creams, depilatory creams. Um, as Africans, we have kinky hard hair. Now, what sometimes happens if you use a, a very close shave, very close, is that this, the, the hair is cut very, very short. When it begins to grow, it will kink and grow in the skin, uh, forming an irritant. Hair is supposed to grow out. Um, women would have seen men who get what we call razor burns, and they get like pimples all over here. Almost the same thing. And so sometimes in those who use uh, shavers, um, like razors, or the creams which you use to, to totally, um, you know, they wax it off. When the hair begins to grow in, in what is called the hair root of follicle, it begins to kink inside, forming an irritation, and a pimple ensues, it can get infected. And so from time to time, you'll find women who'll say, after shaving, uh, four or five, a week after shaving, there are pimples there. Mm. Um, well, th the issue is not, n not, not to shave, but to shave in such a way that you leave a bit of a stubble. So uh, the hair is a little bit outside the skin. So you could use one of the uh, uh, commercial shavers, the, one, the ones that men use for their hair, you mm -hmm. know, or for their beards, that leaves a bit of a stubble, very short hair, so that you're not shaving it too close to the skin such that it begins to grow inside. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one cause mm -hmm. of that. Okay, and Dr. Maureen, I'll ask you a question. Is it okay to shave and why, especially after shaving, do m most women exp have uh, this kind of infection, let's say yeast infection or even UTI, what exactly happens? Okay, I'm not sure whether mm. the yeast infection is because mm. of the actual shaving. Mm. It would actually be because of something else. Uh, for me, in terms of how you'd like to keep um, what we call the perineum, that mm. area is called the perineum, eh? mm. and that's like, or the vulva, that's the outside, uh, the outside part, is really personal. Some people like to have their hair, and I think they're well within their rights to do so. It, I sh it's not for me to mm. choose for somebody mm. what they want to do. Mm. So if her and her partner are of the school of thought that they want to be natural and they want to have their hair, it's okay, and there's nothing wrong with it, and they shouldn't be ashamed about it. Mm. However, I think it is fashionable. We have all sorts of waxes from bikini, mm. Brazilian, and all that. Chinese. Oh, I don't know about the Chinese oh, wax, hair. but we'll see it. <laughs> they're here. What's the difference between a Brazilian and a Chinese wax? But I think that's not mm. for today's topic. Okay. <laughs> but it's just okay to go ahead and yeah. shave. No, it's, it's, mm. it's something that's personal. Okay. And I think everybody should do what's comfortable for mm. them. I think on shaving, we don't have don't shave, do mm. shave. Mm. What's comfortable for you? as an individual, mm. please go ahead and do it. But like what Dr. Wasuna was talking about is mm. very true. And that's what I'd have asked that is the late, is the, her daughter shaving? If she's not shaving and again, it will come a week after and again also around the time of the periods, that's when these problems mm. tend to, mm. to, to crop up. Mm. But if it's not because of something like that, again, like always, I'll say, please, mm. can she just have a gynae look at it mm. when the actual pimple is there? It could be anything. It could mm. be something like herpes, but herpes is painful. Mm. Unlike, I mean, they'll both be painful, even though, because that's folliculitis, because mm. it's the hair follicle that gets infected. We call it folliculitis and mm. will form that pimple-like uh, mm. structure on the outside part of the, yeah. of, of the labia. And let's hear from Margaret from Kitengela. Hello, Maggie. Hello. Hello, hi. Hi, Chiu. You had a concern? Yes, you could have with the story. Yeah, Uliza. You could have with the story. Mm-hmm. I had a urine infection. Okay. I had a hospital almost four times now. I had a hospital, but still, I had a hospital. Okay. Then there is this symptom. Mm-hmm. I had a yeah. Uh, kwenda kwa chomara mingi. 
mm-hmm. then maybe when having sex is very very painful okay so there's an ilikuwa na uliza in section ni za fanya mtu asipate bola ama because they have spot a member for almost three years now mm. but sija pata okay yeah asante sana magi okay all right uh, i don't know who's going to answer the question <laughs> but dr morino can go ahead and answer uh, the question sure. okay uh, mm. thank you very much um magi seems to have i think uh two separate distinct issues whereby she seems to be having no actually three mm. she has um pain uh, during intercourse she has a urine infection and she also is having difficulty conceiving mm. uh, a urine infection per se i would not say would be something that would cause her not to conceive however you do you can have that um for example something like gonorrhea can infect both the urinary tract and the pelvic structures so if it is something like say gonorrhea could cause the urinary symptoms and still also uh, go to the pelvic structures that may be a cause of the infertility mm. but she's somebody who really needs to be seen by a gynae and uh, when i say a gynae i mean a real gynecologist mm. okay um to have an evaluation so that one we stop this recurrent urine infections which is probably the reason why she's having and i think she has a pelvic infection for her to be having pain during intercourse so it could be that she's having a pelvic infection mm. and again if she's having a pelvic infection that's something that can affect her tubes okay and cause infertility but she needs an evaluation it's not something that we can solve for her on a tv channel oh, okay yes. I, i do know if, you, if i if i can just chat mm, in yes, uh, she's onto something very i- important here oftentimes um patients confuse a uti and a yeast infection and oftentimes if they'll, they'll just go to a, for example they'll walk into a chemist and say <coughs> i have a uti and then they're given antibiotics now antibiotics kill bacteria not yeast that cause not yeast and so the yeast which is the the the, the white yeast discharge becomes worse each time they're taking the antibiotic because they just go they didn't see a doctor they just went over the counter and said I have a UTI and the person in the pharmacy will just you know mm. in certain drug stores wherever will give them um, an antibiotic so um, as she mentions whenever you have complex situations like this let them come and be evaluated mm. by a competent doctor and a, a gynecologist and um, these are issues that we we see all the time and we we can solve them mm-hmm. yeah. doctor wasuna let's get to the vaginal care how do you care for your vagina from cleaning it to the right even panties to use rejuvenation in the first place how do you go what what are some of the steps that you can advise women that they should do what are the do's and don'ts when it comes to vaginal care okay mm. the first do or is do not douche as, as mentioned by dr marine the vagina is a self cleansing mechanism has a self cleansing mechanism so you don't have to use special soaps inside you don't have to use no um it will cleanse itself if you have a smell something is wrong if you if, if a woman is generally having good hygiene on the outside and there's a smell there's a problem but generally the vagina will cleanse itself so the first thing that we really want to to get the message out there is that douches are or medicated douches are not necessary mm. they're not necessary mm-hmm. we do have some special um ph balanced soaps which can be used externally not internally externally they are balanced to have the same acidic levels as the 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 vagina itself now those are acceptable again but even on the label on these they say do not use them internally mm. you don't have to okay and so that is basically all that has to be done it's mm. a self cleansing mechanism it's not like the mouth where you have to brush your teeth br- brush your tongue all the way no this will cleanse itself generally mm-hmm. yes so that's the first uh, important point that and still on cleansing dog uh, during menses some women tend to maybe dr morin you can understand that better tend to you want to wipe yourself even after going maybe for a short call during menses when you maybe changing your pad is that right because you said it's a self cleansing mechanism Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Again, during menses mm. there's an effluent, there's blood, it's coming out, you understand? So you still don't need to do anything. Um I, I think I'm fortunate I've been a mm. gynecologist for several years mm. and I can tell you I don't use anything special to clean that particular area, mm. maybe the outside, 
as, uh, as um, he has mentioned, that we have some special uh, preparations that have been, uh, as he has said, uh, pH balanced. And um, th then they're nice. And they're, Doc, they're you just face that camera, receive okay. that call from Susan <laughs> from Kawangware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just look at the camera and receive the call. Susan is calling us live from Kawangware. Okay. Yeah, Susan, hi. Hi, Susan. Susan. Mm -hmm. Okay, sana. So she's complaining about um, something that uh, a lot of women complain about, mm. whereby they imagine that the vagina has become wider. Now, unless it's something external, which most times after deli normal deliveries, even if she had a tear, it would have been repaired. So actually, it's something that is psychological. Mm. It's not physical. Because even what I'd like to really inform women, that actually, uh, if a woman is involved in sexual contact, and she's fully aroused and is actually reaching uh, climax, you find the vagina balloons by 300%. So it's wider. So you find the act of intercourse is not related to how tight or how thin the vagina actually is. Mm. Women, we are emotional people. Mm. So you find it's how you feel your partner is relating to you. Yeah such things can affect how you feel by intercourse. Mm. So you find somebody is complaining that the place is wider. Um, I'm one of those, I'd be very skeptical. Mm. I'd actually want to find more what's happening in the relationship mm. that has not been happening previously. What can we do to repair the psychological relationship other than the physical? But in terms of physical, the balloon, the, the vagina actually mm. balloons out when a woman is fully aroused mm. so that it is big or small mm. does not happen. And this is also to tell you that we have the opposite of that whereby mm. you have in rape cases or someone's a relationship whereby she's not satisfied. Uh, they have actually had to repair a vagina because the woman is not getting aroused, the man is well endowed and they've actually perforated the posterior wall of the vagina during the act to tell you that in a proper sexual act, the vagina should balloon. So it's something that should not concern her. Mm. She should probably come see a gynae, have a bit of counseling so that she's reassured that her anatomy is actually normal. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good step to be reassured that it actually looks and feels normal. Mm. And then from there, look into what are the psychological aspects in this relationship that's making her not feel attractive and sexually mm. uh, pleasurable to her husband. Yeah. And yeah. Doc, do you mean it's just a misconception that once one gives birth, then there is, it, it, it's wide? And that's why many people go even for vaginal tightening, it's, you know? It's, it's, is it psychological really, or does it really happen? Um, fine. Different mm. people have different schools of thought. But mm. for me, from what uh, I was taught regarding sexu sex and uh, sexual disorders and what happens during a normal sexual act, it does not makes sense to me mm. about uh, the size uh, following, following, following uh, delivery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dr. Wasuna, do you agree with Dr. Maureen's sentiments? Because it's very, as many women are usually very much careful, especially there's so much misconception. Many would prefer going for a cesarean section because they do not want to interfere with their vagina. They go, many go for vaginal tightening. Th let's, let's shed more light on interesting. that. Interesting, yes. Mm. It is an interesting um, topic. It's coming up. <coughs> Um, if I'm to, if I'm to, you know, in, in medicine we are taught, don't ever say I disagree with you. Mm. It's an alternative view, yeah. they are, and and they both could be could be, could be correct. Mm. Sometimes because of delivery. And Doctor Asuna, before you continue, just also face the camera. Receive <laughs> receive the call from Mary. Hello, Mary. Okay, his his put is on hold. Maybe she's going to call back. Okay, so Let's getting continue. back to it. Mm. Sometimes during delivery, you could have what is called birth trauma. Um, or we have made a cut or there's a tear, okay? So the muscles are distracted, they're, they're pushed apart. Um, if they're not repaired properly, then you might have a problem. Um, what she was mentioning was in the event, the, the event that a doctor has done his part properly and repaired the muscles well. Mm. Yes, then, but if they're not repaired properly, then you could have what we call a lax perineum. 
because there was trauma, it was torn. Mm. And then there might be um, a benefit in having a surgeon or a doctor uh, bring, up, bring things together again, what now we will call tightening. Now, tightening is a whole subject. Mm. I've heard of laser methods of tightening, and I'll talk about those. I've heard of chemicals that are used um, to tighten. Mm. Um, Doc, Susan is back. You okay. can receive her call. Hello, Susan. Just talk to her. Use the Hello, phone. Susan. Can you hear us? Hello, Susan. Hello. Okay, talk to us. Really, uh, Susan, could talk to you. Nikona hii shida nikienda kwa haja dogo na sikia kuwasho hatua. Nikona shida gani? Aya, ah, asante. Aya, ah, thank you. You can answer her first. Yes, because. Susan might have either a yeast infection because yeast also causes um, irritation. You know when you have a sore throat, it's sore. When you have a sore throat. Mm. And then if you put something um, acidic on a sore throat, it'll hurt you. So if you have a yeast infection and the whole area outside is sore, mm. okay, Urine coming out will, will cause that. But also, if you have a urine infection itself, the urine is super acidic and that burns. So it I, might either be a urine infection or a yeast infection or both. Mm. And so that can be treated either. If she's checked by a doctor, we can check the urine and see if there's an infection, check the birth canal, check, uh, 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 take a sample and see if there's, there's a yeast, mm. and we can treat that very easily. Okay, okay? let's finish up so, on So tightening. back to what we were saying. Mm. And so some doctors will bring the muscles back together again. And... Um, we, we know, as, as, as Dr. Owichi was saying, that for a woman, uh, the sexual act is not just physical. There's an emotional component, psychological component to it. So if a, a woman is physically okay, but emotionally you have not sorted out that component, mm. uh, she will not be okay. Because for a woman, sex is not just physical, it's also emotional. And so if a woman feels better about herself because she's been, quote unquote, fixed, then she might, um, on her own, uh, perceive better sexual um, satisfaction because she feels better about herself. Mm -hmm. A woman could be, um, in the eyes of her, her partner, the most beautiful woman ever. But if she doesn't think that she's beautiful, she might respond in a certain way. And so there's a lot to do with sexuality that goes beyond just the integrity or form of the vagina, but also deals with the emotional, psychological component mm -hmm. of a woman's well-being. Okay. Let's continue with the do's and the don'ts, Doc. Well, we, we talked about no douching. Yes. Okay. Mm. Um, don'ts. Um, we talked about inserting, don't insert, mm. uh, soaps not to use, chemicals not to use. Largely, that is it for, mm. for, um, for, for hygiene. Okay. Yeah. And there's uh, some For me, what mm. I'd like to add for mm. her uh, on the do's is on the issue of underwear. Yes. Oh, <laughs> okay. Aha. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Okay, then. Ram it home. <laughs> no, again, we really would emphasize that um, I think most people are comfortable wearing underwear. Uh, for those who are comfortable not wearing underwear, again, that's a matter of preference. I mm. leave it to them. It's, it's an option uh, because you're going to air that place uh, very well. Mm. But because majority of us feel more secure when we have inner garments, mm. we really request that it should be of natural fiber to avoid synthetic fibers, because the unfortunate thing with synthetic fibers, they don't breathe. They don't breathe at all. Mm. So you find that the circulation is poor. Now that's a very good environment for getting yeast infections, which is something very common. And it's so common that we find that the statistic is such that a woman will have a yeast infection at least mm. once in her lifetime. So mm. it's like every woman you know is mm. going to have had a yeast infection. Yes. So that's everybody. That's like 100%. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so practically what she's saying in our setting is cotton is a good yes. uh, a good material to use mm. because it, it, it not only can, can absorb moisture, it can uh, breathing, what we call breathing, um, <coughs> but it, it, it allows uh, aeration. Mm. Okay, and it's very comfortable. Mm -hmm. So cotton is good. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and still on the panties, one of our viewers is asking about the thongs mm -hmm. and also should you wear a panty at night, as mm -hmm. in should you also, know, is it okay if you just walked without one? What would you say of that? Dr. Okay, Mary? I think we've answered the mm -hmm. walking without one. Mm -hmm. If you are comfortable to do so, please, uh, mm -hmm. that's a personal uh, decision. Okay. Uh, about thongs, again, um, underwear should be loose and cotton fiber. If the thong can um, stick to that criteria, again, it's a personal decision. Decision, right. Yes. And someone else is asking, they have uh, a child, two-year-old child, 
but she's ever itchy, what could be the problem? The first thing you want to check with the child mm. is if they have inserted something that should not be inserted in, foreign body. Children uh, exp experiment and explore themselves. Mm. So you might find a bead, something like that. So that's, that's something that should be checked, okay? Mm. Children can also get yeast, especially if, if uh, and, or infections there because of lack of hygiene, mm. okay? They should be taught how to wipe themselves. Remember, for a lady, a, a girl, it's always from front to back. Mm -hmm. If the, the opposite is done, you can get infections around the area because no, we're not just talking about the, the vagina. There's also skin, and skin can have um, infections just like any other. Mm. And so a, a brief a check with the gynecologist, we're able to check what's the cause of it. Allergies can happen. Some people will be allergic to certain um, materials. And so the undergarments that a little girl is wearing, mm. she might be allergic to a certain material. Some of them have paints and things like that, um, depending on where they were sourced from. So those are things that we can look into and sort out. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Dr. Maureen, is there a special way to care for your vagina during menses and also after delivery? Maybe you can combine the two. Um, in terms of a special way, mm. I'm still going to maintain. Mm. The vagina does its work. Uh, God was very gracious about it. So mm. it's more of what we call perennial hygiene. Mm. And I think we have discussed that uh, quite extensively. Mm on what underwears to wear and yeah, stuff. Right. Mm. So it would just be to look for a product, whether it will be pads. I think most people, especially after delivery, pads are much more comfortable. Mm. But in terms of uh, during your menstruation, if you are able to hygienically use tampons, mm -hmm. and I think there's also something, it's not new, it has uh, been there for quite a while. Mm. We have also what we call the menstrual cups. Mm. and. Um, the challenge with the cups and tampons, it really requires somebody with very, very high levels of hygiene mm. and access, ready access to running water. Mm. Because you must realize you're not going to use uh, dirty fingers to insert mm. and remove the tampon or, or the cup. Mm. So some, those are some of the limitations. But you find, um, uh, personally, um, I was quite taken aback by the use of the cups, mm. but I've met a few women who are using it and they're very, very happy with their choice of uh, sanitary hygiene. Mm. So, but it really requires that as a person, your level of hygiene is very high mm. to successfully use those things and not get infections. Because I think one of the challenges with, um, let's just say something like tampons, mm. um, you have them on Dr. Moran, can I cut you short? No problem. All right, <laughs> Joyce from Muranga. Hello, Joyce. Hello, Hello. Hello. Mkuta kuliza uje, mpata mikitare jetri ya. Ok. Up to now, mpata period, and mpata jipo jipo chini, what could be the problem? Ok, asante sana. She said discharge? Yeah. Consistent discharge. And also she's not had her periods. Well, if it, uh, the first thing when a woman doesn't have her periods, we mm. assume she's pregnant until proven otherwise. Mm -hmm. But there are other conditions which could have a woman having irregular or absent periods mm. if she's not past the menopause. She could be having a hormonal imbalance, okay? Certain kinds of birth control also cause you to go off your menses. Mm. If a woman has delivered and she's breastfeeding, she might not have menses if she's breastfeeding very well. Mm. Um, as to the, the presence of a discharge which is um, incessant, it keeps on coming, that could be an infection that needs to be looked into mm. and properly treated, which okay. as we've, we've mentioned before, it's either bacterial or fungal or whatever it is, and we can have a, uh, uh, a check mm. and, and, and treat it accordingly. Okay. Dr. Maureen, let's continue from where we left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, tampons. Tampons, <laughs> yes, we're <laughs> talking about it. So uh, you find like for tampons, uh, even on the packaging, they'll tell you that you shouldn't have them on for more than four hours. So you find that uh, if you do that, and especially, and you should tailor the tampon to the amount of flow that you're getting. So you find somebody who has very light flow should use a smaller tampon that absorbs little blood because the challenge is if you are not observing, like you're not washing your hands and you're keeping the tampons on for too long, there's a syndrome called toxic shock syndrome. Mm. And it's a terrible, terrible uh, bacterial infection that uh, women can get and it's it's not something that you really want to to go through mm. so as i've said uh, tampons caps they're very good methods for menstrual hygiene mm. however it really requires that as a person you're quite disciplined mm. and again also have ready access to mm. running 
running water. Mm. So for the rest of us who may not, because again, really understanding that there are different people come from different parts of the country. Mm. You have a girl who maybe has to walk uh, 10 kilometers to mm. just access a bucket of water. Mm. So it may be more expensive. A cup would actually be much cheaper for her. Mm. But because of the um, conditions required for her to use the cup, maybe she may still have to use a, mm. a, a sanitary towel. Mm -hmm. So in terms of options, it would just be do that. And please, you don't need to clean your vagina. Mm. It'll do its work if you leave it alone. Mm. You clean it with soap, you mess with the vagina, you get an awful discharge, and you really don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's still just my plea to women. Okay, yes. and as we wind up, how, for, for the pads users, how many, how regularly should you change your pad? Is it, what are some of the factors that you consider? Is it the flow of your blood or should, how often, what, are, how, what should you consider to change before you could change your pad? Okay, definitely. Mm -hmm. If a pad is fully soaked and mm -hmm. we also don't want accidents and it has taken one hour and it's fully soaked, you're mm -hmm. obviously going to have to change the pad. Mm -hmm. But if it's a pad can maintain, I, I'd maintain the same time frame, four to six hours, mm. a pad should be changed again. Okay, yes. and for Dr. Wasunas, one of our viewers is asking, do we have some uh, vaginal workouts as a way of vaginal care? What did you say of that? Okay, right. Uh, classically, we're taught about what we call Kegels exercises. Mm. Now, <clears throat> this is how it's done. Imagine if you're passing urine, and then midstream, you want to stop urine from flowing, so you squeeze it mm. like that, okay? Mm. So that, that particular uh, exercise, mm. it, what it does, it doesn't really work out the vagina, the tube per se, mm. but there are muscles around which support and might give what we call tightness, especially towards the opening, all right? Mm. Uh, these muscles are called muscles of the floor, the pelvic floor, mm. okay? Right, so these muscles, when they are contracted, they're contracted, they surround the vagina, okay? And so they'll help with tightening. And <clears throat> with, with practice, if a woman has, has uh, done that exercise quite a bit, even during the intimate act, mm. and she squeezes, it might or might not, depending on people that are different, give extra mm. pleasure to either her or her partner. So in terms of exercise, it's Kegel's exercises. Mm. They are good also for women who have just delivered babies mm. because, remember, everything has been stretched and loose. So you want to get muscles to have what we call tone, a natural state of slight contraction. Mm. So Kegel's exercises, where you squeeze the muscle that is used to stop urine from flowing, mm. that same act. Um, if done consistently mm. and done quite a bit, can, can give support to make one feel a little tighter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dr. Anthony Wasuna and Dr. Maureen Owiti, thank you so much for making time for the show. That's all the time we had today, but we do appreciate it. Maybe you could tell us where we can reach you if you want more information on this, starting with Dr. Maureen. Uh, for me, I'm available at um, Kenyatta National Hospital, mm. and also I do my private practice at Gynecare. Mm. It's at Fortis next to Kenyatta. Okay. Mm. I'm Tantan. available at the Nairobi Hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for coming. We do appreciate. That's the time we had. Thank you for watching my doctor show today. Thank you for your contribution, your calls. We highly appreciate. The show continues next week, same place, same time, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I'll see you then. Goodbye for now.